looking for a traitor. And remember, he snuck out of Singapore wearing furs and high heels. What's the story? I don't know, but we're never going to make that flight if we don't pull through this mess. Move over. We're not going to run a military roadblock. Want the authority of the U.S. Army? This just ain't our day. Let's make the best of it. for the last flight out. Things were looking grim, but that was no new deal. We'd been one step ahead of a lynch mob since we'd volunteered to help fight the Japanese in China. Dang. A reward? A court martial. <laughs> new Year's Eve. Roosevelt and Hirohito had agreed to make Manila a demilitarized zone, and these people were crazy enough to think the war would pass them by. Hell. Maybe they had the right idea. Celebrate while you can. As if the good old days were now. With Harlem's help, I put together a pretty sweet little gin mill. It wasn't exactly five-star, but neither was the clientele. Uncle Sam's boys paid cash, and the brass pretty much left us alone, which, given our past, was just fine with me. Charlie, you crazy come back here. Army looking for you. Hell, nobody chases me out of my own place. I have the same rights as any businessman in Manila. Couldn't get on plane, huh? <laughs> Never mind that. Besides, the Japanese aren't even here yet. I'm not talking about the Japanese. American army looking for you. What? It's like China all over again. They're, they're gonna arrest you, and then the, uh, the Japanese no, will take no, no, you no. away. No, 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 no. Take it easy, huh? The army can't arrest me. I'm a civilian. And it isn't anything like China. Tell him. Damn. What's Shimoto doing here? I don't know, but he's throwing his weight around like he has some right to. You know, Shimoto and I understand each other. He's the kind of man who wants something he can't take. We can make that work for us. At least he didn't bring any troops. And he's wearing civvies. Snakes with pretty skins, still snakes. Yeah, yeah. stop acting like you got your foot on the gas pedal, huh? Smile. For now, it's business as usual. Are you uh, not asking me to go up on a stage? I figure it's the shortest way off this island. <sighs> Another casualty of war. It's showtime! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to dedicate tonight's show to the Japanese Bureau of Terrorism. Oh, I mean tourists. Well, of course, you know the Japanese, they, they love to travel in groups and they love to shoot pictures, among other things. Ooh. Oh, oh, the beautiful tree! Way to go! Pardon me, sweetheart. Up we go. Oh, hello, Charlie. Shimoto. We want to move things right along right now with the number one song in the Philippines since the Japanese have arrived. I'll never smile again. You know, your friend has a very dangerous sense of humor, considering his predicament. Oh, and yours. Predicament? Mm -hmm. Well, the way I hear it, Shimoda, your emperor has promised to embrace and protect all civilians in his glorious liberation of the world. <laughs> yes, but we can't very well protect you if you're in a United States Army stockade, can we? What's that mean? Well, apparently some information about our relationship found its way to your army intelligence. Our relationship? Mm. 
What the hell are you talking about? Oh, information alluding to a long and lucrative uh, arrangement between you and the Japanese military. You piece of squat. No wonder I couldn't get off this island. You set me up. Exactly. And without our protection, Uncle Sam will shoot you as a spy. Well, your protection? Yes. Huh. <laughs> Shimoto, you're a Nisai, local-born Japanese. That means you have as much standing with the brass in Tokyo as pond scum. But you'll be surprised by my new authority, Charlie. And please, too, if you're useful. You know, I didn't like what you did in China. And I like you even less now. So say what you came here to say, or you'll be sucking on my fist in about five seconds. We know MacArthur is making his last stand at Corridor. We need to know if your aircraft carriers will be here to support him. On your feet and out of here. Well, I do suppose you need some time to... I said get out of here. Our troops will be entering Manila in less than 20 hours. You have that time. Oh, Charlie. Happy New Year. <laughs> Everyone knows how devastating the sneak attack was on Pearl Harbor. But few people know that there were subtle clues that it was coming. Now, I happen to have a recording of a conversation made by the Imperial Japanese Travel Bureau and a reservation desk at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. Let's listen in. Hello? Reservation desk? Oh, Charlie, you I should am. not have come back. Yes, it's almost midnight. Get the car and move it out back. Harlem and I are going to have to slip out during the fireworks. You two to go around the front. I'm going the back. All right, block that. I'm going around the back. Let's go. Look out. Look out. Oh, how much uh, space would you need? Oh, uh, approximately uh, 45,000 more. The American captain that was looking for you. Yeah. Go on. Well, we want to kind of like uh, keep it as a surprise. Charles Wilson Rhodes, formerly of the United States Army, American Chinese Volunteer Forces. Is this some kind of testimonial? You're under arrest. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't arrest me. I'm a civilian. Thanks to those charges, your boys trumped up in China. Get out of here. Captain, you pulled that trigger in a city declared open by MacArthur, and I would love to see what they hang you from. Oh, in fact, if you look out the window, we are coming right now. The charge is treason. And this time, you won't escape the firing squad by some stroke of luck. Sweetheart, but he needs this more than you do. Don't, don't get too close. I'll say this for you, pal. You're determined. Here, Cyan, hold this tight. And I'll keep pressure on that artery, all right? I'm still taking you in, Ross. Well, you just lie still. Lie still. Now, for once in your life, get off the West Point Bull. It was anyway. Holy cow. Seems I wasn't the only one on the captain's list. Look at this. He's scheduled to take charge of some kind of flight out of Walker Field first thing in the morning. Did I hear you right? The man's got a flight out of here? Holding company? What's a holding company? I don't know. Harlem and I are going to find out. 
What about me? Do you think the new owner of the Blue Parrot could buy us a farewell drink? <laughs> Captain Jonathan Whitney Hartford, U.S. Army Intelligence. It had a nice ring to it. Nobody hassled a guy from intelligence like maybe he had some. I was convinced this gig would get us back to Pearl, where we could ride out this war as pretty as you please. Harlem, as usual, was having second thoughts. I've got to work on his attitude. I'm telling you, there's no way you're going to pass a black man off as your aid in this man's army. Trust me. Besides, why ride, coach, when you got a shot at first cabin? Huh? Things were finally breaking our way. It's about time. Captain Hartford? Sir. Uh, this is my aide, Sergeant Jones. He'll be guarding the back of the plane, sir. You're late, soldier. We have half the Japanese army in spitting distance, and... What happened to your uniform? Oh, uh, uh, my orders came to me in the middle of an air raid, sir, but I am ready and able to transport these soldiers. Soldiers? Mm. We're talking refuse. Throwaways. Company H, the holding company. Every misfit, every oddball, every clown gathered from the Pacific Theater. If it weren't for the fact we have to feed them and waste needed troops guarding them, I'd let them all rot. All you have to do is accompany them stateside. Captain Hartford, the command is yours. Uh, excuse me, sir, but doesn't some kind of a non-com come with this menagerie? That would be me, sir. Oh. All right, men, heads up. Don't you play with the numbers so the captain knows you. Incoming. All right, Sergeant, I'll meet the men up there where it's a little less noisy. Captain, I don't like the sound of that number two engine. That main bearing's going fast. Uh, I, I'd be concerned about that bearing if I were you, sir. Frank Case here knows engines like Edison knew light bulbs. Babe Ruth knew baseball. Who are you? Corporal Poindexter, sir. Uh, I'm a demolitions expert. Explosives, fire stuff. I have an IQ of 197. If you give credence to mental testing, I don't. <clears throat> well, it uh, says here you repeatedly refuse lawful orders from your superiors. I have yet to encounter my superior in this military environment. Look, Einstein, what do you get when you subtract 52 from 97? 45. Me too. I'll be damned. I finally met an officer, I understand. Hurry, let me through. I'm coming through, boys. Let me on. Why don't you turn, Whip? Hey, hey, don't put your hand on me. I'll put your arm in a splint. Who is this guy? He looks familiar. You must see me riding the 39 Derby. Is that why they call you Whip? No, no. No, they call me Whip. Because I can whip any you know what in this man's army. Are you color? Are you bulletproof? Okay, Sergeant. Load them up, everybody. All let's right, go. Let's load them up. Come on, move it. Oh, no. Now what? Captain, sir. Wouldn't want you to leave these two behind. Sign here, sir. Here's the key, sir. I keep them locked up till you get to Leavenworth. Leavenworth? For what? Forever.